for Brian. BBD himself. BB does it. Yep. Uh, round one loss for Brian, and he's battled back to be an X1, still in contention for top eight. Mm -hmm. After that beating he received. Yep. So, I've known BBD for a, a while. Mm -hmm. um, just outside, I had never played against him. Uh, and until the Atlanta Invitational, we played in the last last round, and he's like really goofy, like real laid back, makes a ton of jokes, and then once he gets into match mode, he is dead serious. He's in game mode. He's he's giving him the stare. It was, it was like very like disorienting because I'm just like used to like big jovial BBD. Looks like BBD's on the draw. Yeah, I actually only met BBD through playing against him. So when okay. I found out that he was like yeah, hilarious, right. it was a great <laughs> surprise to me. I actually didn't find out until he basically began writing articles for StarCityGames.com sure, sure. and then I realized, wow, this guy's <laughs> yeah. a riot. Yeah. So uh, since then, BBD and I have become better and better friends, even as we criticize and lambast each other, both live and on Twitter, <laughs> for all the world to see. So Andrew plays the best card in his deck, uh, Far <laughs> BBD's best card is a little better than that one. It's been banned. Uh, Lingering Souls. BBD actually popularized Esper Tokens and in... Innistrad Block to the point that it was banned yeah. from the format, and I, then they I gave it back to him. <laughs> <laughs> BBD <laughs> was quite the blockmaster. Yeah. So BBD plays a second coming to play tap land, but has an Evacence Pilgrim to keep up in the mana development race. Uh, looks like Andrew's hand is kind of slow. So he's going to Dreadbore Avacyn's Pilgrim. Yeah, he's got a Mizium Mortars as well. Looks like he's a uh, Thragtusk, I believe. Yeah. That's interesting. Dreadbore's one of the few cards that can kill a, a Planeswalker, which is obviously the biggest threat Brian can threaten to resolve on the next turn, probably, mm -hmm. uh, with four mana. But, uh... Nice, nice turn from Brian. He plays a Gavany Township, uh, a Selesnia Key Rune, and uses the Key Rune right away to play another Pilgrim. I've seen that Key Rune doing work. It seems especially well matched against the various Terminus decks. Okay. Also, a nice trick is using Gavany Township to grow your Key Rune during your opponent's end step. Oh, yeah. So, uh, the best card in Standard for both players. Perfect. <laughs> this should be fun. Well, how can Farseek be the best card in Andrew's deck and Thragtusk be the best card in Standard if he's playing Thragtusk? Because Andrew has a bunch of other cards <laughs> that cost 4 and 5 mana that he can accelerate into. And the block. If, uh, if you like high life totals, this is a Standard for you. High hopes indeed. Uh, Thragtusk is one of the best cards at answering itself, which is one of the reasons it's become so ubiquitous. Yeah. Another good word. In, uh, yeah, another good word. I've used that word today. <laughs> I feel much smarter for doing so. Man, I'm going to have to increase my level, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> hey, don't worry. If you get too smart, I'll just start stealing them from you. <laughs> That's very fair. All right, so Borderland Ranger from Andrew Tenjum. Uh, one thing we noticed about um, Andrew's deck is his deck has a good amount of mana. Uh, in addition to the regular 24 lands you'd see in almost every Jun deck, he has a 4th Far Seek, which is pretty standard. He has 3 Rakdos Kirun and 2 Borderland Ranger. So he gets a little utility out of his extra mana, but he still has a lot of mana. Yeah, Rakdos Kirun is a nice card. I honestly did not see that one coming as far as uh, constructed formats go. Mm. I, I did not expect it to be a player, but it definitely has been, and uh, I'm impressed. I think it plays that role, like you said, of that we're missing with man lands, really, which is what I was talking about in the last match. Right. You, you need mana and something to do at mm -hmm. the same time, and not a lot of cards You need these that. split cards. Uh, basically, when you can get... Cards that work on low amounts of mana and large amounts of mana are the best, and key runes do, do them both. Accurate. Uh, looks like uh, Andrew's going to... You can't imagine anything but a Mizium Mortars for, you know, four creatures. It's not even that good, but yeah. Maybe he shrug <laughs> bins his guys. Yeah, no big deal. Casual kill four of my creatures. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to block this time. All uh, right. Yeah, Brian has the uh, Gavany Township yep. to make I, blocking for. He also has Vault of the Archangel for when he starts developing his token strategy. And note that Andrew has not actually like gotten any of Brian's like threats. He's been attacking his mana. He's been to some extent successful, but... You know, they're both on such high life totals that it's actually you know, right. not really that effective to disrupt mana when your opponent can just draw lands and keep playing. Yeah, spells. actual lands. Um, what is, Brian passes on five lands. Yeah, well, he does have two Armada Worms that would make 
Uh, that also has a restoration, restoration angel. angel. That's a good way to eat your beast token. Yep. Pillar of Flame to finish it off. So sure, that's actually uh, probably the best. I guess uh, Brian has uh, elves, but Pillar of Flame doesn't have a ton of things to do yeah. in non-zombie matchups. At this stage, Brian's definitely just played out all the little dudes he has, and killing a Restoration Angel is pretty good for the Jun deck. It's one of the cards you can occasionally struggle to defeat. Uh, Restoration Al Angel almost always two for ones. They don't have good. The, the instant speed removal in this format is very, very bad. Looks like we're getting in for six now. Yeah. I mean, it's key runes. Uh, pretty solid as well. As long as you can keep the board clear of things uh, and key runes attack unimpeded, uh, they're very difficult to remove for the drone deck. That we've seen to see. Uh, apparently, it's all over the top tables. Yep. Tournament. I I mentioned that Jund is like the deck that didn't get a lot of press after week one. Um, it's gonna change. Yeah, it's <clears throat> never changes. There's, there's nothing wrong with playing a drone deck. Rakdos key rune is going to shut down those Slesnia key runes for a little while, but Gavany Township can turn them right back on. Brian doing some quick math. He wants to make sure he can Township and still be able to uh, attack. And yep, he's got enough. He's got exactly enough. Uh, so opponent's going to go for it on the key rune. Does he not see it? or? Uh, apparently. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, yeah, uh, and you wanted to save four damage, apparently. I mean, to be fair, you're on a you know a two turner, I guess, if you take if you, that. Yeah, if you just take it, but not, ta not taking it also doesn't seem great. <laughs> well, attacking here would be slightly aggressive. <laughs> well, Brian is on a 13 turn clock. <laughs> He's not going to kill himself, as I like to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Opponents don't kill themselves. All right, so uh, Brian's going to get the work. Uh, Andrew seems to have flooded out, hasn't really played anything relevant in three or four turns. It's a danger of the Jun deck. Absolutely. Gonna attack with our two best creatures. Andrew's going to block with his only one at this point, I imagine. Otherwise, he's just dead to the board next turn. Mm -hmm. Even better for um, Brian, he still has uh, a seven of the bloodline to cover a lot of shenanigans. So I think he's in a pretty dominant position this game. You know, another cool thing about these keywords I just noticed is they can. Ah, he drew an Olivia. I was actually just about to say they are a, cr a creature threat that you can control whether your opponent's Olivia has any effect on. Right. That's a. Uh, that's a pretty big game. I feel like a lot of these Jun decks right now are winning, getting lots of free wins. I know that uh, I played a relatively poor Jun deck <laughs> at the Cincinnati Open. It was solid, but uh, very fun. I yeah, and I had something, some things going for it. But the biggest one is that I had an Olivia. I could grind out some uh, control decks and get free wins against all these, uh, a lot of these decks. <laughs> like one thing I do like about uh, Brian's Brian's deck for a junk deck, he has a surprising amount of answers. He has four. That's uh, that's oh, oftentimes four more than most other junk decks. Uh, the winning deck I last week I believe had one, maybe two main deck answers. Two and Olivia. Yeah. Yeah. She's uh she's trouble. You don't want none of her. All right, so Brian takes out game one. Um, we go to sideboarding. Uh, Brian, you can tell that Brian has uh, put his priorities elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not going to have a, a bunch for the John matchup. But I actually think his main deck, most of his main deck actually lines up pretty well. Um, Amusingly, uh, Jund is obviously a big deck at the Pro Tour that we're running concurrently with. Mm -hmm. And one of the decks people came with to try and beat Jund for uh, Lingering Souls Black White Tokens decks because yeah. those decks kind of enjoy a natural advantage against an attrition based deck. Right. That's kind of the case here in Standard as well. It's a, it's a little bit different with this Jund deck. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel that the uh, the mid range it wants to play a board dominating threat as yes. opposed to get repeated two for ones. Like a modern or the old standard Jund yeah. deck wants to get repeated two for ones. 
Oh. When, when this deck, it's like you want to play like a card you can't beat after killing all the cards you play. I, I don't know if I would even, I don't know if I'd characterize Modern Jund that way. I, I think Modern Jund is, like obviously Blood Bright Elf is the big, the mm -hmm. namesake two for one. But I think beyond that, it's mostly trying to you know, be, be one up, basically. Like you don't mind trading one for one as long as you're one up as you're doing it. Yeah. And at the end, you know, if you just have the only thing that's left, mm -hmm. it's a perfectly fine trade. Uh, and I think that it's fair to say that these Jund decks definitely, they run a few more things that are focused on getting that board again. Mizium Warriors is obviously the biggest example that we saw in that game. Mm -hmm. uh, things like Sever the Bloodline or you know, Stone Unplayable in Modern, but huge role players in Standard. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just like the, it's like the removal we have. Yep. Not I, I have seen a, a huge uptick in the amount of removal spells in Standard, even though none of it's still good. <laughs> Well, you know what oh. happens, right? Like, people are playtesting and then something kills them. They're like, well, yeah, I should I, add something to kill, kill that. that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a definite thing. There's uh, there's only so many uh, removal spells you can play before some of them are bad. Incidentally, I don't agree with that particular line of logic. I prefer yeah. to think of some way to kill them. <laughs> but yes. I, I can understand the or, impetus. Yeah, or some way to go over the top. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, so Brian, Brian's sideboard has cards like Deathrite Shaman, Centaur Healer, uh, Ray of Revelation. He does That's a have, nice one. Yeah, he does have an Angel of Serenity, which I... Ooh la la. Yeah. Uh, hope he draws that one because uh, one of the weaknesses of the Jun deck is that it cannot really realistically beat an Angel, an Angel of Serenity. Yeah. Uh, he has, you know, has a third set of the Bloodline, a third of Living Ring, and an Angel of Serenity. The, like... Honestly, I don't see a lot of, for him to uh, to take out. Uh, maybe he might want to take out a couple of the Planeswalkers if... Uh, uh, he did see Dreadbore, right. so that, that's kind of a concern, I guess. Maybe, Soren can be kind of hard maybe to Maybe some of the... May, yeah, so every once in a while, Soren, Soren's probably the weakest. Yeah. Uh, the 1-1 one, one is not particularly imposing. But uh, it might be part of his mana career. Like, he might have enough mana to t shave some Pilgrims. Or That's not Pilgrims, also, Arbor Elves. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're definitely the worst ones. And having seen how aggressively Andrew's going to attack them, you might be looking to hold on to yeah. land heavier hands. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Over on Andrew's side of the board, uh, he has a few cards I think seem fine in this matchup. I like Appetite for Brains. It, I think it hits a lot of the big problem cards, like Dragtoast, Restoration Angel, Armada, and the Planeswalkers. All the cards that are going to generate the most advantage. So speaking of the Appetite, I feel that it can be a main deck card. If you if you had the opponents, either one of the opponents we've seen on mm -hmm. camera, Appetite for Brains is a live card in all of your matches. I, I think Appetite is definitely uh, pretty playable. Brian off to a quick start just wiping on the draw with Arbor Elf. I think Appetite for Brains is obviously like real metagame dependent, but this is the metagame that you want to be playing it in. Yeah. Two weeks from now, who knows, but uh, now. There are a lot of decks that all they want to do on turns one, two, and three is develop their mana base. Yep. Uh, very, very few decks want to get on the board before turn four, or before four mana. Another About interesting that. card Andrew's sideboarding is Blasphemous Act, which is probably a reasonable sweeper in this matchup. Mm -hmm. As you can see, last game, it might not... Ooh. That, uh... Yeah, that, that was an excellent Dreadbore from... Uh, Andrew and Brian seems to be mana screwed and Andrew on the wasteland plan. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, he does. He did draw an Oblivion Ring, so his uh, next draw is going. Next land is going to see the Olivia off, but he might be dead before that happens. So uh, restoration, restoration Angel hits the bin uh, as Brian discards. Always my favorite thing to do. Discard to hand size. Uh, we have better things to do than attack with our key rune. That's not good for Brian. Yeah. Uh, Rag Tusk is a lot better than attacking with the key That definitely qualifies as better. <laughs> Isn't that the worst when you know you see something that kind of obvious your opponent can do to you on board and they're just like, nope, nope move I got something on. better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're already like getting crushed, so uh, lightning quick game two. Yep. Uh, and it takes game two as uh, Brian stumbles on mana. Both For literally a, like a couple turns or whatever, like Andrew's draw is very good. Both these players have excellent game faces. I just want to throw that out there. Serious business from, mm -hmm. from both sides. They mean it. Uh, Andrew is a former finalist on the Open Series, actually. Oh, okay. I, I cannot recall which one specifically. I know he was playing Blue White Delver, 
Okay, so standard open? Yeah, standard open finalist. So he's a white delver. good at deck decisions. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's, I guess the, he pulled the Lauren Nolan here, you know, play, switched to the other three. <laughs> yeah, play, play, play the obvious best deck. Yeah, I, I think he's that kind of player, just from conversations I've had with him. I know okay. he uh, is uh, friends with Justin Uppel and uh, those guys. Do you know where he's from? No, I don't. I assume this area since uh, okay. he, and, he and Justin know each other. So nearby, I would figure. Um, I'm trying to remember that, that open now. It's, it's really bugging me. I'm sure it's going to continue to bug me for quite some time. I, I, I could just them. look it up. I'm going to look it up. Oh, we have I'm, the whole internet. I malign people for not looking up information that they can easily find. So yeah. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a dose of my own medicine here. And while we're waiting on them to sideboard, we'll go ahead and find Andrew's tournament results. All right, so uh, we're shuffling up for game three. Uh, this is probably close to winning in. Uh, they may have to play uh, cards. Madison. Next one. Madison. Madison, Wisconsin. Standard open, yeah. All right. I did not attend that one. I did. That's fun. <laughs> I, I believe you. These are I went fun. Undefeated. <laughs> I, <laughs> strange. <laughs> so, uh, game three getting underway here. Uh, Brian with the snap mulligan. I, I do think land heavy hands are generally what he wants to see. His cards are better than Andrew's, I think, in the matchup, right? Oh uh, yeah! Once it once both play if both players get to develop and draw, draw get in their like sweet spot of. Uh, if both players started the game with six mana in play and zero cards in their hand, I think Brian would have the edge. Yes, that's kind of that's kind of the gist. Like his cards are a little a little more powerful. He can make better use of his mana. He has just a higher quantity of like sweet spells too. I think mm -hmm. it's close, but. He also has the uh, the late game of his lands, his Gavany Township and yep. his Vault of the Archangel, exactly. uh, where they're much better than Kessig Wolfram for Andrew. Yeah, Kessig Wolfram, one of those cards that really came down once uh, Primeval Titan left the format. Has not it's enjoyed still okay, its former but glory. like, yeah, just not the same card. Last time we saw it do some real big game with a Gate Creeper Vine on defense, so. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, I gotta block those Snapcaster Mages. <laughs> Who on earth is playing a gatekeeper? Did he get a gate? Our, our former number one seed who lost? No, he did not get gates. He does not have a gate. Uh, BBD appears to have a pretty reasonable start this game. Centaur Healer. So wow. I, it looks like he kind of shifted his deck in the post board game to be more of like a green white uh, kind of aggro mid range strategy. Mm -hmm. Where he just wants to be playing these value creatures to try and get his opponent dead. Keep in mind, Andrew doesn't have things like Restoration Angel to block stuff like Centaur Healer. He just has to actually respect mm -hmm. it. Yeah, he yeah, actually has to kill it. <laughs> Rakdos Kira. Kira. That is yeah. one of the cards that respects a Centaur Healer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, be interested to see how many Acidic Slimes uh, you played in the, in the future. I think that card's... Granted, it kind of shares a spot at the mana curve and the color yeah. as a certain other I, I have no idea what you could be referring to. <laughs> with it comes into playability that costs five mana and is green. No no hints, but uh, yeah, I think Acidic Slime like, actually has a place. If if you got like a worse Acidic Slime. Sure. Like a four mana Viridian Shaman? You think yeah. That see play? That's actually like... I think that would be playable in the standard format, but it'd obviously be like really below the bar for what we're used to. Mm -hmm. No Thrag Tusk for Andrew. He's stuck with Huntmaster. Well, it'd it have to be like a. You need an artifact or enchantment. You need to get the uh, Detention Spheres and Oblivion Rings from sure. other decks. That's fair. Uh, and that. Restoration Angel for value. Uh, yeah, if you're a fan of value <laughs> and consider gaining life value. I do. I love to gain life. I prefer to make my opponents lose it. One of my magic maxims, you know. If, as long as I'm alive, they can't win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> it's actually impossible. <laughs> yeah. uh, Brian is much more alive than Andrew at the moment. But uh, he's going to have uh, some tough decisions uh, trying to deal with this Huntmaster of the Fells. You know, in the uh, in the Star City Acquisitions Department, they say that Magic is a game where the goal is that you're both wizards and you're supposed to knock 20 hats off of your opponent. 
Okay. So I would classify Brian in this situation as having significantly more hats than Andrew. Yeah. He's 26 hats. Now, he has, a, he has a, he's increased his hat lead. Yep, his hat lead, very big. He's now got double the hats of Andrew. So if we called the game right now... <laughs> Brian wins on 2-1 to one hat advantage. Uh, fortunately for Andrew, <laughs> we're not going to call. We're going to let him keep playing. <laughs> it's kind of us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, do you, what do you think here? He's got an Olivia. He can play it, turn a guy into a vampire with the plan being to steal it, but... Uh, he's going to go with another master, master number two, I believe. Yep. You never know. Could be a reckless wife. Could be. Instigator gang. I don't know. I guess we've seen that BBD has removal, so maybe the Olivia plan is not so good. Oh, we have a Dread War anyway. Well, that, this is nice. Now we've actually like completely stemmed the bleeding. Yeah, absolutely. I actually... Not a huge fan of that wolf attack. Uh, if Brian attacks, is yep. Andrew going to block? And if he has another removal spell, then he won't even get the opportunity. Granted, that centaur healer's stock is going down fast. Andrew's life total has received two two-point boosts. That Rakdos mm -hmm. key rune will eventually be online. Like, mm -hmm. There's not a lot of uh, value to be gained in just having a yeah, three. Yeah, you don't think. I mean, this is yeah, this is a type of game, type of match, type of everything Oof. where. Yeah, see, this is super aggressive, taking the uh, O-Ring and that Huntmaster. Yeah, I actually feel like it's because Brian doesn't have another spell to play. That, that might be the case. That also means he'll probably be in Just bad kidding. shape against Olivia Boldaren. Yeah, I don't think this Olivia is going to be the greatest for uh, Brian, but... Man, he really hasn't like done much, yeah. and he seems like he has far more cards in play. We're going to go ahead and kill the, the uh, Pilgrim. Now, Brian did miss a land drop, so he's two lands shy of flashbacking his Sever the Bloodline, mm -hmm. which is one of the answers he already has to this board state, which is slowly uh, slowly knocking him further into the, the back there. Yeah. PBD is losing his hats. He's, he's losing hats fast. Soon they will be tied on hats. See, in Limited, you can just attack with the Centaur Healer. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. <You laughs> it's need, a little aggressive. Here. You, need, you need this Lesnia Chimes. <laughs> yeah. Your opponent has to be real trusting. Oh, jeez. Oh, the big that's Robins. thunderous. Thunderous indeed. That's a lot of hats. And we can ping to make it full, the full 14. Oh, that's going to be 12. Since Brian doesn't buy the trick. He's no, he's not, he's not <laughs> respecting the giant growth from Andrew. And, uh, yeah, he should have left uh, that woodland cemetery open. Maybe he'd have gotten in. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately for Andrew, he has the onboard trick of making his Olivia bigger. Uh, so Brian's facing two 5-5 five, five flyers. Oh, he, he hit Angel a land. of Serenity. Oh, it is! Oh, oh snap. All right. Oh. Do, do we clear our opponent's board, or do we get one of our guys back as well? I would probably leave uh, Andrew with the wolf. Leave him with the wolf? I don't know. I, I feel like Actually, I can leave him with the Hellkite. You can't leave him with the Olivia, obviously. Uh, yeah. Uh, what if you just take his board because if your guy dies, Olivia's going to kill you anyway? That's fair to say. That's reasonable. Brian has arrived at your conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, kinda, I can't beat that card anyway. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't beat a removal spell. But I'm pretty sure Andrew, ha in fact, has a removal spell. So it's good. going to... Yeah, there's a Dreadbore for Andrew, so... He's going to Dreadbore and recast his Olivia. Oh, it's under my Hellkite. And huh? that'll take Brian to one, and pretty much out of outs. That's fair. All right, yep. so Brian casts the best card. Not good enough. Not good enough. Andrew's uh, draw is just... Fantastic, like very, very well paced, you know, had a good amount of lands. He had a, a higher critical mass of like relevant spells than Brian. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't stop.